What is up, JL Life? Model here. Got another video today. I'm sorry if the audio is poor. I misplaced my microphone today. Can't find it. In today's video, we're going to be talking about your Jeep and beads. Beads in your Jeep. Let me help. This is what we're going to be talking about today. No. no. Th those are cool. They're nifty when you like to go hiking, but that's not it. Let's try that again. Really? No. No. We're not doing... It's not appropriate. No. No, not this again. No! Hey. No. Come on. No, I'm not going to do it. No, no. Come on. Fine. Oh! Can we move on? Thank you. No, so, come on, man. Beats. No. <laughs> Can you get serious? Beats. Yeah, I'm probably gonna need that after this video. All right, let me just show you. Beads, balancing beads. We got the Magnum Plus balancing compound, 10 and a half ounces. We had five different bags, five different tires. <laughs> but we're gonna be using these. I have been using these in bromance on my 38 inch tires uh, for about, I wanna say, about six or eight weeks I've had them in the four I don't have them in the spare yet and we're going to do that in this video if you're running large tires balancing the tire can be a very difficult task I took my 38s in to get balanced and it was done very poorly now I hate to sit there and rag on a shop about it because it's a big tire it's a lot of weight I get it it's hard to balance and my ride quality was absolute trash. I did not like riding in the Jeep anywhere past 45 miles an hour because it was just so uncomfortable. So Misty got her, her Yokohamas, uh, those gnarly, those gnarly tires of hers. And we bought them from uh, Joe here in Rancho from Rancho Tires. And he suggested that she try balancing beads. So she started to look into the balancing beads and she bought balancing beads from Joe and we put them in her Yokohamas and we haven't really had much of an issue. Um, we did have to take her tires back to get remounted because we were lining up the valve stem to, and it, here, here's something I can't quite find an answer on because I'm being told both. I've been told that valve stem is supposed to be on the yellow dot. I've been told that it's supposed to be on the red dot. Well, we moved hers to the red dot and then hers cleaned up nicely. I figured if it's working for her, I might as well give it a try for bromance because I mean, it's, it's, it was just really bad. So I took my Jeep in to discount tire and I'm like, Hey, you know, all I want you guys to do is just break the bead, throw this bag in. Um, so inside this bag is another bag and you just take that inside bag. You just throw it in the tire. That's it. And they wanted to charge me a hundred bucks and I'm like, no, I'd rather do it with a crowbar at that point. I'm not paying you a hundred dollars just to pop open my valve stem or to break my bead and throw in a bag again. No, that's, it was ridiculously overpriced. So I started calling around other shops and Firestone said they would do it for 30 bucks. I'm like, yeah, that. 100% sounds reasonable. I will go down there and get it done. Of course, it takes time for the wheels to start moving, for the bag to tear open, for your beads to start distributing all around the tire. <clears throat> so when I was doing research with the beads and I was talking to different tire shops, because again, this the beads are new to me as well. Truck coming, stand by. 
I was at the guy down at discount told me don't do that you're going to hate your ride quality in the city the only thing these are good for is highway driving you're going to hate your ride it's going to vibrate like crazy you won't like this I'm like just put them in the damn tire and then he's like oh 100 bucks and I'm like mm, that seems very cutthroat of you sir so I went down to Firestone and the tech there it says well I've I've tried balancing beads before and they're real hit and miss sometimes they're great sometimes they're not um, I don't really recommend them because they're not consistent well I told him I don't care just put them in please I want to try it because again I mean I I did not like driving my Jeep it was so bad um, so he tells me, oh, well, well, we'll get it done. We're going to leave the weights on there. And I had absolute sheets of weights on each one of my tires. It was crazy how much weight was on my wheels. Uh, but he said, we're going to leave that on there because it's only going to work in conjunction with those sticky weights and help balance it smoother. Well, I assumed he knew more than me. I'm like, yeah, let's, we'll do it that way. And we went about leaving the sticky weights on once I got the balancing beads in. You know, I was driving around, um, the ride quality got better, but it wasn't, wasn't good enough to where I'm was happy with it. So trying to troubleshoot things and I came home and I just ripped off the weights the way I was thinking. I'm like, well, it's either going to improve it great, or it's going to keep it the same or make it worse and then, again that just kind of goes into troubleshooting whatever issues you're having with your jeep so i figured oh well, i just take off the sticky weights i can go get it rebalanced and they're not going to reuse the same sticky weights to balance it which i wouldn't put past the shop and say oh yeah you're good to go <laughs> out the door and you have the same darn issues so i'm i got a a plastic marring tool and i just you know peeled them off i threw them away and i went driving and oh my God, that was, it was so nice. It was, I enjoyed driving the Jeep again. It was smooth. I did not get no death wobble, you know, zero to 65, smooth as butter. When I started hitting 75, sometimes you get a bit of a, a bump in the wheels. You, uh, another great benefit of the balancing beads is you don't have to go take them to get rebalanced. It's balanced unless you tear a tire i mean even if you break a bead the chances of you losing your beads is very minimal because you know you you break your bead up here at the the rim you know all your beads when you're going slow sit at the bottom of the tire so you break your bead they're not just going to fly out and they're going to sit right there you get your beads set again and you're good to go the only thing that's going to happen is if you tear the tire and your beads spill out but, you know, let's say you go mudding and you get mud in your wheels and you're trying to drive home and you don't clean out the mud, your wheels are going to be unbalanced. You will notice it. It will not be a pleasurable ride. So, with the balancing beads, in theory, it's supposed to work in, with that. So, you got your heavy spot over here. The beads will balance out. Well, science and will balance out and make it even to give you a smoother ride. Of course, I would recommend just taking, cleaning out the mud the most you can to give you a better ride but you don't have to worry about knocking off sticky weights you don't have to go and get it rebalanced after an aggressive trip of wheeling you just go and drive and you know it is possible for the beads to not balance correctly when you're rolling it, to correct that you just come to a s slowdown and you start again and it should rebalance and the trick is with the balancing beads is that they require smooth acceleration for them to work properly. If you like to mash that gas pedal and zip it, it's very likely that you will not consistently get balanced wheels when you're driving and you'll notice you won't enjoy it. But like me, I'm not a very aggressive driver on the gas pedal. Uh, it smooths out 95% of the times I'm 100% happy with it. Now, I've also heard people complain about, well, they have a tendency of clumping together when you live in moist environments. Well, I can't really 
attest if that is true or not. I live in a desert. It's dry 95% of the time uh, in like humid mornings that we have, which aren't very humid. I haven't had an issue with it. I will continue to use balancing beads again, as I said, as long as I'm on large tires, which I'll be honest, I don't think I'm ever going back to a small tire. I, the only people I've ever tell, heard tell me that balancing beads don't work are tire shops. Um, I'm not saying they don't know what they're doing. Of course not. I mean, it's what they do. It's their profession. But every real life application that I've talked to about balancing beads has absolutely loved them. So it is important when you do do your balancing beads is that they are the correct weight of bag for your tire because different tires are require different amount of weight, which of course makes sense to a smart person. So don't think too much about it. Just know there is a very specific weight to go with your t very specific tire. If you put in the wrong weight in the balancing beads, you're probably not gonna have a good time on the road. What I went with and what Misty went with, and we are both 100% happy with these, is again, the Magnum Plus, <clears throat> the Magnum Plus uh, balancing compound. And for mine, I don't remember how much Misty's were in weight, uh, was 10, ounce, 10 and a half ounces. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so getting these installed, you can either take them to a tire shop and have them do that, uh, how long they take depends on whatever tire shop you go to. How much you want to spend? And I wasn't spending hundred dollars just for people to throw bags in my. No, no. But there are other ways you can do this. One, you can pop the bead yourself and just throw in the bag, and you're done. Two is what we're I'm going to be doing today. And I'll show you, but we got to go and get to the spare, and I'll show you what how we're going to get it in. So real quick, this is what I was talking about with the dots. You have a yellow dot. Every tire has a yellow dot. Every tire, where's the red dot? Has a red dot. So every tire has a red dot. Every tire has a yellow. And I've heard it both ways. I've heard that this valve stem is supposed to line up with the yellow. I've heard that it's supposed to line up with the red. Um, one thing that I can verify is that one means valve stem line up and the other one means heavy spot on the tire. So here's my valve stem which of course lines up right here. And I mean, it, it should be right there. You can say it's close all you want. OCD. The unfortunate thing is all my other tires, after I learned about <clears throat> this dot, um, I had rubbed them all off out rock crawling, you know, doing the type of stuff I do. Whether they were mounted correctly, this is probably not such a big deal for smaller tires, but as you start running big, heavy, giant masses of rubber, I'm sure it's important. But I digress. So what we're going to do, if you decide to do this, this method, you can do while the tires are still in your Jeep. I would just recommend bracing it so your tire doesn't deflate all the way because we'll be taking out the core valve stem and dropping the beads in one at a time. So the important things about this is just make sure your valve stem is at the bottom. It'd be kind of hard getting it in the top. You can either use a, a tool like this to take out your valve stem. I'm actually going to be using a tool, the valve stem decorer, and just screw it out. All right, so we got all the air out. Um, what we're going to be using is just a small little funnel gonna go on top got me a, a nice bowl because I don't want to go losing beads but after opening the bag as I said it's just gonna be a very flimsy bag inside with all of the balancing beads and again if you can get inside of the wheel of the tire just throwing this in by itself will be sufficient going to open my bag careful not to lose any weight is important here <clears throat> so All right, 
right, well, the funnel did not work as well as I was hoping. I'm not gonna record all this because this is gonna be pretty time consuming. I'm putting one bead in at a time and I'm making sure that it drops all the way in by pushing it with a pick. Gently, of course. It's a lot easier doing it the other way, but this is an option for someone who refuses to pay, pay labor for simple tasks. Yeah, after about five minutes, I got bored of doing that. We're gonna try doing this a little quicker. We're gonna use a trick I've seen done before with a jack, a ratchet, and that's it. So what you're gonna do from the back side of the tire, you're going to get the the surface area that jacks up on the sidewall, close to the rim, not on the rim. Obviously that won't be very efficient, but you're going to lay the tire down. To avoid unnecessary scratching to your rim, just put a rag underneath your strap. So that actually worked pretty well. Uh, De-beaded it, put in a pry bar. Um, before you do this step, what I'm about to do, make sure that it's sealed on the other side because you don't want your beads running everywhere if you broke your bead on both sides, which isn't likely doing it this way, but always better safe than sorry. So doing it the other way was going to take way too long. Ain't about that life. I just want the beads to be able to roll in through the crack down here. Oh, but. Eee. but yeah, darn it. <laughs> That's what we're going to be doing. So what I do, just be careful when you're pouring these down into your crevasse. Because these beads tend to bounce. Move your excess balls over to your pry. And again, you don't need a lot of force, just enough to create that little hole. Remember these, if you're not careful, you'll have beads bouncing and going everywhere. Got a screwdriver, obviously, to scrape around where the wheel and the tire meet, just to get all the balls that are kind of stuck in to the, the edge. And push them towards the hole. Once you got all the beads done, we're gonna reseat the bead. We got all the beads in. I'm gonna put our valve stem back in. Use the same tool we use to take it out. Just always be careful with the valve stems. These should be easy in and out. They're very delicate, so just be careful. Once the valve stem's in, I'm gonna pump it with air until we get the two seat back on the bead. saw bead pop back on put on our valve cap and there it is that's how you do it without taking it to a tire shop wasn't too difficult in conclusion we paid for these balancing beads and you want my personal opinion of them i like them misty likes them all the people who i spoke to who actually has ran them before Tell me, they love the balancing beads for big tires. This isn't for small tires. This isn't for zippy vehicles. This is for slow acceleration. Slow, I mean more steady. If you're someone who likes to get up, you know, test your zero to 60 often, don't expect your balancing beads to be properly balanced as often as you do that because that's not how they work. They need 
slow acceleration to get to where they need to be inside the tire once things start moving. I love the fact that I don't have to go and get my tires rebalanced unless I need a new tire. And I'm sure that might be one of the reasons that I'm only hearing negative things about these from tire shops. I don't know. You are having problems balancing your tires. I think balancing beads are a very viable option for you. Just make sure you use the right weight in your tire. Again, it's very specific for your actual tire because a 38 Patagonia might very well weigh just as much as a 35 Yokohama. A lot of factors go into this. So I would always recommend talking to someone who knows what they're doing. And I'm going to plug someone here. I'm going to put a link to him down in the description. Uh, you can give him a call and tell him he will ship you out balancing beads. Um, he will make sure you get set up with the right, correct weight. And again, he's taking care of both mine and Missy's Jeep in this regard and 100% happy with it. Let's get back a little. So his name is Joe. He works, he owns and operates uh, Rear Ranchers Tires. Call him, shoot him a message on Facebook, ask him about balancing beads, how much he'll charge you, all that stuff, and what weight you need. That is super important, what weight you need. Now, doing all my research about balancing beads, the only time I've ever heard people say, no, I do not like this, are the ones who put airsoft BBs in their tires, radiator fluid in, antifreeze in their, in their tires, and other things that aren't designed for this. When people have switched from those home remedies, I better go turn off that air compressor before it kicks on. Switched over from the home remedies over to the designed for this specific purpose. Said they are very satisfied with it and again to this day, I'm, I'm sure there's people out there who, will, who have had a bad time with balancing beads. I'm not one of them, I love them. I will continue to buy them as mentioned. Um, install is relatively easy. Do not take it to somewhere like Discount Tire where they're going to charge you 100 bucks just to throw the bag in there. That is just absurd. It's way too much. Uh, but of course, I mean, if you're okay with throwing that kind of money at at this, then I mean, that's all of you. Uh, Firestone was more than half off from what Discount was going to charge me. But also, this is something you can easily install at home as long as you have a jack, a ratchet strap a pry bar and a screwdriver and of course the compressor to re-air it up if you have all these things you can get this done in an hour easy yeah about an hour enjoy the video as always please like comment subscribe share uh, continue to help us grow uh, we've hit 1600 plus subscribers and it's super exciting thank you everyone who continues to support us I hope you guys have been enjoying the content we're going to continue pushing it out um, until next time Y'all keep it easy. Later. The strange things I do for this channel, huh? <laughs> I swear my neighbors gotta think I'm nuts. <laughs>